Zoe to have control. Shie Syndra, you know, Syndra, one of these champions that can quite often make the play. And alongside Xiao Peng on an Elise, you can set up ganks very effectively. See how this one's going to pan out as we head into game number three between Suning and DMO. Both of these squads looking towards the summer split, wanting to finish this split off with a bang. Not mathematically out of playoffs just yet. So they need every single win that they can find. Suning. Once again, opting for a lot of their own comfort picks when it comes to this. One of the few teams that are still running the misfortune in the bottom lane. Oh, hang on a second, Bin. Uh, Bin's in trouble right here. Natural, ruthless predator. Only going to get a small stun and Bin flashes away. It's going to be flash for flash, though, because Mark tried to go further for that one. The problem here, though, is we already talked about how that pressure on the top side can come through with Natural and Xiaopong. You know, Bin with no flash. So he's got to be very careful in pushing forward in his top lane. Natural and Xiaopeng can double down on this aggression. All right, one apiece here. And we have a little bit of level one action, but Bin on this zone, he's going to be relatively safe anyway towards the top side. So I wouldn't be worried too much for him. And we'll see what the response is from Suni. It was DMO that aggressed. And they're going to be trying to get this blue buff for Suning, not willing to give it up. In goes SOFM, Sword Art and Angel off to the side. Trouble Bubble goes wide. Bit of damage on either side. Xiao Peng, the target right here, still has his flash available, but he's getting very low. Repel will flash as well. Flashes across the board. They're going for this one. Play on to two, exhaust on Xiao Peng. He will drop for First Blood. And what else can they find? Xie, the next target. Angel will have Trouble Bubble soon. Goes through and immediately cleansed. The auto damage isn't quite there yet. And Bin getting a good amount of damage done onto Natural as well as a bonus on the end of the fight. It's a disaster for DMO. Not only do they fall behind on that play, they give over the kills towards Suning. Xie, or Xiao Peng is going to have to start off on his solo mission to clear his jungle. And that's going to set this play that we talked about from DMO, this early game aggression so far behind. Already a 500 gold lead at two minutes. That's pretty insane. Angel dodges away from the stun there. Yeah, you're not meant to lose those trades at level two when your opponent's level one, but you know what? Angel managing to do a sneaky little bit of footwork and gets the trade onto Shie. So Suning with this early lead now, let's see how they try to push their advantages. We talked about Angel not having the, the best of control in this lane. Still Zoe, so we'll push out Shie. But now you've got the extra kill in your back pocket. You can definitely look to have more control in this mid lane matchup. These dives that we talked about for Suning could definitely come as answers to the aggression from Natural and Xiaopong on the top side of the map. Good pressure in the bottom side here from Gala and Mark. Just going to be able to chip away and see if they can get an early plate for themselves. But I want to focus on the junglers here because I mentioned it before. Game number one, SOFM didn't look good on this set, but he's starting things off a bit differently now. Has an assist for himself very early on. He's able to clear away his jungle comfortably, get the reset. But the question for me is, once again, it's what we were talking about before this game started. How is he going to match Xiaopong? How is he going to be able to keep up with the early game Elise? But well, it's going to be a lot easier now with the faster clear. Xiao Peng, he's, he only just finished his first three camps. Only just hit level three. Whereas we've got a full back coming through. Hang on. Finn and Natural. This is a bit of a battle in the top lane. Natural goes back in. And we know Natural is an aggressive player. He's usually not given these opportunities. That was a big mistake from Finn. This is... This is not at all the way that I thought this top lane was going to go, especially when you got the assist going over early, good damage coming through from Bin to be start things off. But now Bin finds himself one kill behind, a kill going over to Natural without Shao Peng's assistance. So at least now it gives a bit of breathing room to this top side of the map for DMO. As, it, as DMO start to go forward in this game, they're going to be relying on Natural to be that disruption in the back line because you're looking at Xiao Peng, Xie, even Gala to a certain extent, being a bit more pick orientated with this Elise and Syndra, or at least trying to lock one member down so then they can quickly turn this into a 4v5. And we know Natural as this player that loves to go for that split push style historically. And he's been moving away from that. He's been going for these picks that will work better in the team fights and skirmishes. And so far, that seems to be working out. He seems to have been practicing on these picks as he goes for the tower dive and gets another one onto Bin. Oh no, it's all falling apart for Sooning so early in the game. 
I don't know how Bin has died twice already. This is really bad from the Sunin top laner. SOFM wants to... No, you can't get that one. Slice and dice on out. Natural is going to be fine. We talked about DMO punishing in game number one. Natural is doing just that in game number three here. Two long swords to his name and already pushing that wave in. Natural's hit that level six mark to Bin's level four. He can look to continue ramping up this aggression or even if he wants to, start to move around the map. Maybe look for some ganks where he can get in towards Chie in the mid lane. Dragon gonna be started as SOFM. Hex Flash is on the spot. And uh, DMO, they know that they've got all of the advantages they need in the top side of the map, so they can start to put the pressure now on towards the bottom half. They know that they just don't need to, they can leave Natural alone now. They can ignore him for the rest of this game because he's gonna win this one completely by himself. Nice trouble bubble from Angel, just keeping on getting a little bit of poke. DMO were also afraid to go for that dragon because they saw SOFM in the top lane. Knew that he wasn't gonna be able to pat down towards the bottom lane soon enough. So they're able to steal away that objective. So now we're looking at DMO. Xie starting to be able to control this mid lane against Angel. You've got Galen, Mark pushing Quan Fong and Sword Art in the bottom lane, because Quan Fong and Sword Art aren't sure where Xiao Pong is. And DMO control the top lane as well. This is a much better start. And this is something they weren't able to do when they went for this Azir pick in the mid lane last time. Well, I was complaining about Dragon Souls earlier on today. I was complaining about the Mountain Souls. It's not the one I want to see. This time, we've got a Mountain first and a Cloud second, which means we will either have that Ocean or that Infernal Soul, either insane sustain or insane damage. And those those are the two that I want to see the most. And we'll see which one comes through as it gets later on into the game. But most importantly, I want to look at how Sooning respond to this pressure that Natural is consistently putting in the top lane. He's behind the tower right now. Xiaopan coming up to help as well. Matt, what do you do if you're Sooning here? How do you regain control of this game? It's actually quite tough at this early point to gain control back. You've got to rely on some big team fight, but I imagine DMO in their current scenario are looking to push in bot lane and then rotate up towards the Rift Herald, use the advantage that Natural has already gained, and see if they can work in these team fights to pick up the victory. Bin has the Call of the Forge God, so in theory can do a lot more work than Natural in the fights. But if Natural is consistently pushing Bin out, or we've got Xiao Pong making a dive play onto the Orin in the top lane, they won't have this 5v5 fight. It'll be 4v5 in favor of DMO. Look at the CS advantage is starting to build up in the bottom side as well. Gala building a bit of a lead on this Varus, and a lot of that comes from the early aggression that we saw. But the, uh, obviously Varus incredibly good at clearing through the waves as well. He's got the double longsword, already has the early boots as well. Right, we've got tier two boots on both carries from DMO here, but moving up towards the top side of the map now, and Herald will be starting. Gala is moving back down towards the bottom side, trying to get in and collect this wave. So they've decided to forego Gala being part of this play because they have so much damage in natural. And DM, Arsunin are not going to try and contest this. Orin is too far behind. They're a bit worried about walking in blind into this pick style comp we talked about. Yeah, and I think as well, realizing, you know, Juan Fong was late on the recall. He had to clear the minion wave that was going on down in the bottom side. So by the time Juan Fong could ever get there, it was already going to be down. So Gala happy to just move on down towards that bottom lane once again. Natural finding himself the second tower plate in that top lane just on solo pushing alone. No help from the jungle, no Rift Hellwards or anything, just sheer lane dominance. And it's hard to get help from the jungler in this situation as well. SOFM, the phase rush is there to try and help him in these ganks. You're opting to go for this phase rush because you get access to Nimbus Cloak. You go for the Hex Flash in your secondary tree, but it's not enough to help you chase down Natural where he's got the slice and dice, the mobility there, makes it very difficult for SOFM to get into that lane. And it means Natural is free continuously to apply that pressure, especially as we see Xiao Pong clearing out some vision up here in the top side and making a play of his own with Bin taking below three quarters or at least a quarter of his health. They're going to now look to make this Rift Herald play in the top yeah, side. Yeah, it's time to snowball Natural. It's time to get this Renekton on top of everything. Natural flashes for the stun. It's going to be followed up with a cocoon as well. And there's nothing Bin can do about it. The dice to finish off the kill. 0-3 on the Orn. 
And with this Rift Herald, this will be the first tower going that way. Sunin can't defend this either, because Gala and Mark had started to roam. They're not sure where the Tam Kench and the Barris are, so they can't go and approach the wave. Shie stealing away this blue buff right now. Advantage after advantage after advantage. Shie walks away. Bit of damage from Angel, but not enough. A second charge on the Herald. And most importantly, when we see the Herald drop in this top lane, it's usually traded for plates in the bottom side. Not a smidgen here for Sunin. Because Gal and Mark have not had to be a part of this play. This is DMO looking to accelerate through natural. And now we've got to see what this croc can do in these team fights. Renekton, previously in the LPL, has struggled when this far ahead to have these big team fight impacts. So natural has to play perfectly. Get on to Angel and Quan Fong in these fights. Disrupt the backline enough that he's able to counteract Bin, who in theory is the stronger team fighting champion. Now everyone regroups towards the bottom side because this Cloud Drake has spawned. DMO, they want to be the first ones on the scene with Natural at 3 0 0. He's got a Tiama and a Phage and Merc Treads. I don't think that Sunin can contest this, but they're going to try. Teleport comes through from Vin. Group up from DMO, stun onto Angel, he's forced to cleanse immediately, showstopper, but you've jumped into the whole squad, there's a bullet time, DMO getting forced away here, but they're still all alive, now the turnaround, searing charge to get the knockup, sharp on the target, and he's low, he might just be finished off there, exhaust, and he's taken, oh, sort of, with a beautiful stopwatch means that DMO can't trade it. Despite their lead, they're losing the fight here. Stuns, there's a Haymaker as well. Oh, another hook on top of everything. Mark saves Natural at the last second, but Sooning, the team fighting is magnificent. And that's where Sooning shined. It's the team fight that we were talking about. And DMO, with Natural not able to get into the back line, they can't find the picks with Xiaopeng, Xie, and Gala. And the team fight is too strong from Sooning. Caught of the Forge God hits onto several people thanks to a great setup from SOFM. And from that point on, DMO have no right to be in this fight. Well, I asked you a moment ago, Dagda, what does Sooning do to get back into this game? I guess this is the answer. And we said it would be a team fight where they can find the victory, and that's what happens. You hit onto the key carries with the Call of the Forge God thanks to SOFM setting up that fight. And the burst damage from Xiaopeng and Xie never gets to be used. You don't get on towards Angel because he's able to cleanse and flash away. You're not able to get onto Huan Fong because he's positioned behind the tanks. So DMO can't get onto the key targets here, and that's a big issue for them. Yeah, and Huan Fong able to just finish these kills off as well on the Misfortune. Did get caught by a scat of the week at the end there, but able to cleanse it and keep himself safe. So now, 3-3 on the scoreboard and the gold. A lot more even, but it's about where that gold sits because Angel picked up two of the kills, Juan Fon picked up one, and all of the gold on the side of DMO is in the pocket of Natural. And this is where DMO, we're going to see if they can try and change this from a team fight orientated game to a skirmish orientated game. If they can pick off people, we talked about Xiaopeng and Xi have a bunch of burst damage for single targets. If we can have Natural off on his own fighting one to two people, they might be able to find success. But in scenarios like this, they are not going to be successful. Xiaopeng protected by his spiders there. The Paddle Star nearly hit him, and that might have just been enough. But This set for SOFM, so far so good. Feels a bit better. Oh, Huan Feng, he used it. He used the cleanse during the last fight. Takes a huge amount of damage. and will go down. Shie happy to burn the flash, happy to burn the ult. And now they can look to get another tower for themselves. DMO spreading out the fights, not opting to team fights. have now found more successes. Yeah, Natural knows that he's got to be the carry here. But he's not even winning out this fight. Bin has been able to stack up the armor. He's got a full Sunfire cape. And all of this advantage in the top lane for DMO feels diminished. It will come back natural once he finishes that black cleaver doesn't have a way to get through the armor quite yet because he went for the team out so this isn't over <laughs> yes but sword art nearly finds xiao pong there so dmo looking again to spread out this map but the problem is with the current state of affairs in league of legends there are so many objectives for sunin to try and force dmo to fight over it becomes quite difficult for dmo to avoid these scraps so we'll have to see if they can instead fight and pick off Sunin before they can set up for these objectives, or if Sunin can avoid the clutches of DMO until the likes of Rift Herald spawns and Dragon spawns, they can find another successful team. 
So it, it's great to see a bit more of an even game here between the two teams. Game number one was fully in favor of DMO the whole time. Game number two, the opposite way around. It was Suning that took control early and ran away with it. Now, game three, we're at the 15 minute mark and each team on just over 24,000 gold. It's three to four on kills, it's a dragon apiece and only one tower taken. This feels like both teams have the tools to win. They definitely do, but it's gonna be a case of which tools are sharper, who can sink that metal knife in that little bit deeper. And right now it's Sunin who are doing that in these team fights. They did fall behind early, but have definitely brought this back successfully. SOFM and Sword Art now trying to make sure they can't make a play on bottom side. Mark pulled in, but the minion wave is there, so won't tank up too much of the tower here. Oh no, unstoppable force comes through. <laughs> Goodbye. SOFM now onto the bottom lane as well, but the bullet time is over three, forces the flashes, still loses his support. Two kills now for DMO and Huan Fong is completely alone. Everybody's behind the tower and Huan Fong falls. It's Mark that grabs the kill. And now on towards this tower as well. DMO turning up the heat. Xiao Peng and Xi Ye successfully get the pick onto SOFM. And with the numbers advantage, they can continue this aggression forward, get that bottom lane turret. and. You don't have people here from Sunin. Bin is off on the side here. They can crash this wave into the bottom lane turret and then rotate back to get over onto this dragon. Angel gets a good chunk onto natural there. Once again, as you say, dragon spawning in 30 seconds and it will be DMO with the priority. And it's actually Sunin to start this fight off. But this is the combo we were talking about with Shia and Xiaopo. They're the two that you want to keep your eyes on. If they can get a pick like this to start off fights, but then DMO are in great shape because they've got this follow-up 4v5 that they can take. Huan Fong is going to be the one that pays for this early game fight on your screen. But again, DMO can look to rinse and repeat this style if given opportunities like that against him. Just got to try and find these picks, and it was SOFM that was caught out this time. Angel trying to get what damage out that he can before the fight. And that's important when you're playing this Zoe. Oh no, the cocoon! Had his cleanse available. Now Hook comes through, but Mark denies it. Sword Art's gone in. So has Shie in the back line. That interesting positioning there from Shie. Shie got caught by SOFM with the showstopper. Came in behind him, so that's why he ended up in the position uh. that he was. But DMO now, you've, you've still got the bullet time that caught the Forge got available on the Sunni lineup. DMO needs to be careful about how they approach this. Instead, they might just look to take down this mid lane turret, which I really like this idea. I was keeping my eyes on the other side of the fight, but now the fight is going to be moving over towards this dragon. 2,000 HP remains. Fall of the Forge God comes on through, smited away from Xiao Peng. It's a kill going that way as well. DMO might just walk away with everything as well. Nobody goes down. SOFM, the person to fall. DMO can quickly pick off SOFM, and good on Xiao Peng to steal that away. So now they can walk towards Rift Herald as well and keep this game rolling in their favor. They've been doing a great job of getting singular picks as this game goes forward. And you know what? That's just the icing on the cake here. DMO are gonna be able to grab themselves a Rift Herald on top of every other advantage that they found in the last few minutes. So bot lane turret went down in that play before Dragon. Now it's only the mid lane outer turret that's left. And Gala and Mark have been doing a good job of chipping away on that while this is all going on. So they can now, with this Rift Herald, crack open that last out of turret and desperately get the vision that they need to try and pick off SOFM, Angel, and Juan Fong in transition throughout their own jungle. Look at the build that Angel is going for right now. He's got the Ludens already, obviously. Very standard. It looks like he's going to go for a Death Cap as the second item here. He's already got the needlessly large rod in his inventory there. Could still go a different direction, but do you know what? In a game like this, when your team starts to fall behind and you've got all of the kills, I like it. Go all out damage. Definitely going to be needed, especially if he's the one that's getting picked off, which has been the case so far. Oh, change the corruption. There's a stunt to follow it up. Well, he's going to go down. I was saying he was the one that needed to carry, but he's not going to be able to carry from the grave. Now this tier one turret. They might be able to get this just before the charge goes through. Demolish procced here for Mark. I don't think he actually got the Demolish Auto off there. But they might be able to get a second charge. I'm not sure. I think Juan Fong can deny that. 
Now as that play over, Natural doesn't want to try and roam up, doesn't have that teleport available to join them either. So DMO, a bit worrisome about where the Call of the Forge God might have been coming from. So back away from that, but still you're seeing the picks are coming through. You've got the cocoons, you've got these Scatter the Weeks, you've got the Chains of Corruption. This is really difficult for Sunni to deal with. And even with the double cleanse, DMO are still finding the opportunity to get the picks they need. Demo looking good in this game, finding pick after pick. They're able to start these fights the way that they want to start them. And I think that's the most important thing about this game so far. As you rightly said, they want to try and find picks and Suni keep on walking into these traps. Angel just stepping way too far forward without his cleanse available. Right now, I'd like to see them swap over to a few more sweepers on the DMO side, though, because it's about vision denial just as much as it is about getting your own vision down. If they can force Sunin into tough choice about how to try and push into the likes of the river. Oh, hang on. It's going to be Xiaopong getting picked this time around the rappel. Nowhere to go for this one. Flash comes through. Call of the Forge God as well. Really follow up on that one though. It will be the tier one secured for Sunni. So this is where I was going with the, the sweepers is trying to deny vision because there's a lot of it on this top side jungle for Sunni. But also I'd want to see more red wards coming into their control wards coming into their inventory. Because right now it's a little bit lacking and they're not getting this consistent vision down to try and continue this style of getting one member of Sunni down and fighting the four versus five. Bin holds on to his teleport, doesn't go down to protect the tower, but enough about teleports. Shi is in trouble. Huanfeng just goes straight for the bullet time. Here's SOFM as well. Showstopper with the damage out of Huanfeng is an easy kill onto the DMO mid laner. Mistakes coming through from DMO. Shi you should not be in the side lane at this stage. Huanfeng's there. Look to push in mid lane, try and catch people out in transition or force the numbers advantage that you've had. Fortunately though, with the damage that comes through from Huan Fang, Xie drops, and Sunin fans breathe a bit of a sigh of relief. Well, the Colonel reckons that DMO is still going to be able to keep this one in the books right here. 61% for them, but you see that just went from 62.5 to 61 right there. Oh, he's going up again. But it's starting to slip away a little bit here for DMO because they were getting all of the advantages, but they're slowly but surely getting picked apart. And this is how a poke comp starts to look if you're not keeping the pressure on. If you're the ones that are giving over some of that control to S to Sunin, well, SOFM and Sword Art can move in to get some vision control down. DMO need to be the ones dictating the vision and where Sunin can walk, because otherwise they can't get the picks that they really want. Now with Dragon spawning, DMO are a bit late to this fight, thanks to Shia being picked off, and they don't have control of this river. Oh, stunned, but it's going to be stopped by Bellows' breath here. Bin gets out with his life mark as a stopwatch to keep himself safe. But now, the Trouble Bubble will go down onto him and oh, he's gonna get absolutely popped by Angel. Now DMO in a four versus five. Natural pops the Dominus. They don't have vision of him just yet. He wants to go for this fight, will get knocked up, gets the stun back onto Bin though, the damage is there. SOFM Haymaker onto everyone, trading one for one now though. DMO onto the Dragon. Sooning despite the early kill, they lose priority on this one. The big combo from Huan Fung was only used to take down Mark, so now there's no follow-up damage to try and deal with the rest of DMO. DMO now getting onto this dragon. SOFM does have the Hex Flash. He's going to try and go for the steal, but it's taken by Shao Pong. Lantern available. And it means that he can't get the dragon, but at least they get something. Huan Fung moves to the mid lane. We'll be able to grab a tier one. This is a very competitive game between these two teams, but in five minutes time, DMO have the opportunity for an Infernal Soul, and that would skew things very heavily. And it's going to be difficult for Sunin to try and hold on to that, because you've got Natural, who will have his, hopefully his teleport still available at that point in time, so he can start to play over towards this Infernal Dragon with Xiaopong in tow, and you can still have Xie clearing out waves, Gala clearing out waves. So DMO have a way to just two-man this dragon while keeping a good amount of pressure over towards the Baron, which is where Sunin would like to try and put pressure to dissuade DMO going for that Infernal Soul. And you know, if you're Gala right now, if you can look towards this Infernal Soul, it feels really great because on this Varus, you have two options, right? You've got the Lethality and you've got the On-Hit. And if you go Lethality, it's all about getting damage out with your Q. 
But if you go on hit and then you get an Infernal Soul, your Q still does kind of comparable damage anyway. So he's got the best of both worlds if they can get that fourth dragon. But Sooning, certainly not going to give up just yet. Going to get complete vision control here around the Baron Pit. See if they can threaten that and look for picks with the Zoe. Wanfang once again heading off towards this top lane to try and put some pressure on the map for DMO to deal with. But Finn, we're running to natural. Yeah, just knock up to start things off. They're just going to be sparring a bit. Neither of them can really threaten too much. I think Vin probably wins the fight if it goes long enough, but there's no way Natural allows that to happen. Hook onto Shie. Bullet time to follow it up, but Mark saves the day. This is why I don't like Tom Kench. But that's a big ultimate from Huan Fong Yu's. Now DMO can look to fight once again. This is how they won that fight at Dragon because there was no bullet time to get onto Xiaopeng, Shie, Gala. So now you can see Natural, DMO realized this and are moving to collapse. Chains of Corruption. They get away from it for now. Onto Natural, Bin and him continue to spar. They have been all game. And important to mention, these all items are coming through for Bin now. He's just given the uh, Molten Edge over to Huan Fong. And there's a death cap available for Angel. We mentioned that he was building towards that. It's not just the sheer damage that it offers as a straight item. It's also that Bin can give it the upgrade. Natural force back, so he's in base starting to roam out. See things heating up in this mid lane. Huan Fong still no ultimate available just yet. So DMO again looking to get vision control for themselves in this river. Maybe pick off someone wandering through the jungle of Sunni. Setting up for the Baron. We mentioned Sooning were the ones to grab vision a moment ago, but it's going to go back and forth as these two teams move around the map, clear the minion waves. Every time the one team has to back away, reset, or go clear lanes elsewhere, you'll see the other team move in and try and wrestle control. Not a huge amount of wards in the pockets of DMO right now, though, so this is kind of where their vision is staying, and that's not good enough for trying to control this Baron area. You can see a lot of it dark for both teams. And that's where it'll always favor Sooning because this team fight is going to be a lot stronger for them if they're able to get into River at all. I love how in these fights between Bin and Natural, basically nothing happens now. I've stopped even thinking about like play by playing them because you know they're just going to use all of their abilities e at each other and just nod heads the way that dudes do when they see each other in the supermarket and move away. Red buff stolen. Xiaopeng can't contest here. In the meantime, Natural gets to split push a little bit and will get himself a tier two. They're trying to now start up Baron for Sooning to force the teleport. Well, I thought they were going to try and force the teleport at Natural, but Bin actually decides to back away entirely alongside SOFM. So very worried about how quickly Natural can get through these bottom lane turrets and rightfully so. If this Renekton is left alone on his bottom side of the map, he'll be able to get work done. And now DMO have been able to clear Sooning back towards their base. And this is now where Dragon's about to spawn. Dragon about to spawn 25 seconds. Sooning, they've got to deny this one. They've got to be a part of the play here. Stuns onto Bin. I mean, he's just invincible for this I point. I don't know why DMO are consistently putting the CC into Bin. Even if you went towards SOFM in that case, it's a lot better of a pick for you to go for. Natural, happy to tank up a bit of damage himself. It's DMO. They have the vision control right now, and they're going to be the first ones on the scene starting this dragon off. They're just going to try and burst this one. Xiaopunk has his smite available. SOFM is miles away. Infernal soul taken. Natural's 1v1 in the enemy jungler as the rest of Sooning collapsed upon. Chains of Corruption onto Bin. SOFM just about got away, but Natural's onto the back line. He's trying to do anything that he can with this Infernal Soul, and the rest of the squad arrives as well. Bin the only casualty, but with a soul, DMO can look towards Baron. With Natural positioned off the side, Julian SOFM, Huan Fong never felt comfortable to ultimate in that fight. That, that is the key ultimate for Sooning. And DMO got away scot-free because it was never used. And they don't even have to go for the Baron just yet. They know that Sooning can't get that objective for themselves. They're quite happy to just reset, buy some items. They've got the soul. There's no time limit on that. It's not like the other neutrals. It's not like the Baron and the Elder where it's just going to last a couple of minutes. They've got it for the rest of the game now. So they can take their time, reset first, and then come back. And it feels strange to me that Sooning 
didn't opt to all in on that fight. SOFM would have been able to keep Natural at bay with the Showstopper, and then the Renekton couldn't have got access to Huan Fung in the back line. Cloud of the Forge got knocked up multiple members, and Huan Fung could have opened with the bullet time, but instead holding on to it, thinking maybe there would be another opportunity, but it never came. DMO got the dragon, they got the kill, now find themselves with a slight gold lead at the 30 minute mark, but one that they can use to pressure this Baron objective. Bear in mind, Finn is level 15 now, so we'll have another Orn upgrade available, and you'd expect to give him, give that over to Angel here, the Death Cat. But he's nervous that there might be a fight first. Angel is very much the one you got to watch out for during these fights from the side of Sooning. He's the one that's going to be layering a lot of the damage through, and also, as you rightly mentioned before, the bullet time from Fon Fon, if he can get it across the entire enemy team of DMO. Stuns onto Bin once again. And importantly, you mentioned how it's all about this bullet time from Huan Fong. He's going for the Bloodthirster. No zeals this time around. He knows it's all about that ability damage. And DMO right now is all about pushing in this mid lane. Watch the wave on the top side of the map. That's what they're going to collect right now. Nice and juicy and should give them access to this tier two and top. And even the opportunity to pick off Zuning as they try to make their way across to that. DMO with vision control here. There is a ward in the pit for Sooning, so they know this has not been started. Call of the Forge got across everyone. There's a redemption to try and heal people, but sort of solo already. Natural just dives into the back line and finishes everybody off. Bin's going to go down as well as he gets a double on the croc. DMO barely even had to commit to the fight. Huan Fang whiffed on the ulti. Sooning, miserable engage in that engagement <laughs> i wanted i was like is it an engagement because bin misses with the call of the forge god mark does a good job to save gala in that spot but Huan Fung had already committed the ultimate as well alongside the call of the forge god so everything goes in favor of dmo and now they get the, the baron watch this here so gala gets saved thanks to mark shout pung goes up in the air Huan Fung's ultimate is hitting on to no one and the scatter the weak then sets up dmo to take the fight a swing and a miss entirely from Suni. Barely even a swing, honestly. And Bin is not having a good day today. Zero and six on this Orn. It's really not feeling good. And you know, we've had good moments from Bin. It's not like it's not like he's not a good player, but today, it's just not felt there. And it's not the first time that Suni's top lane has struggled. Even when it was Biu Biu, now Bin as well. In this Renekton matchup, Bin has severely struggled, and it does feel like this is starting to be Sooning going, okay, why are we losing in a 1v1 scenario? It's been a long time, and it's even praised when we see these 1v1s where solo kills are going over in top lanes, but not twice in the same game. Demo, they've got the Baron. They're going to start to push in all of the lanes with Call of the Forge. God, Gala flashes away from it. Marks arrive to protect the carries. Sooning, they just lose the ultimate. They will get a flash out of Gala at least, but I don't know if a flash on Gala is going to be enough when you're losing towers across the map in the meantime. Natural can return to the bottom lane again. It was desperation from Sooning. They needed to make a play before these waves hit onto their inhibitor towers. Unfortunately, didn't come up for Sooning. And now DMO are clearing out these outer structures. No more will remain. Only the inhibitor towers and those Nexus turrets left standing. And look at the timing on this Baron buff versus when Elder Dragon is going to spawn. Five seconds apart between Baron ending and Elder arriving. And that means that DMO, they have a perfect transition here from moving out of the siege and into that objective for themselves. Shie stepping a little bit too far forward here. Showstopper comes through, but it's cleansed. Oh, it's not cleansed. In fact, Mark pulled Gala to safety. Natural's gone in with the teleport. Huan Fung barely keeping himself alive, but alive he is. SOFM goes down. Xiao Peng has taken too many tower shots, and now Natural's gone way too deep as well. GA going to be popped from him. And Bin's here to happily tank up the crop. He goes down, and it's two now. Sooning, maybe they can win out a fight here. In fact, no, it's only one. Xiao Peng didn't die after all. He had Zonyas. DMO find the victory. They take out SOFM, and it was a lot closer than DMO would have liked because of their lack of vision on that topside jungle. They hadn't done their due diligence 
and his SOFM does manage to sneak in. But as you said, Mark is doing a great job in this game at keeping Gala, keeping these carries safe. And once again, it's the Tam Kench that stops that engage from Suni. Mark has been unbenched on the Kench. And now over towards this Elder Dragon. They got that top lane inhibitor. And even if they didn't crack the entire base, that's all they needed. Just one inhib, and it's in the perfect lane. Exactly. It's the opposite side of the map to that Elder Dragon. Super creeps will start pouring in. That's why Sunin are looking to rush down this objective, but Nobody from DMO has even noticed. This is the perfect play coming out from Suning. They're going to be able to grab this Elder before DMO can respond. They get this objective. The question is, how quickly, at what cost do they get it? Because they need to find a team fight now off the back of this. Xiaopong's looking to stop the recalls. Will stop SOFMs at least. But the problem here is that you've now lost two of your inhibitor turrets. And DMO can just wait out this Elder Dragon Ball. They've got two, all their outer turrets still up. You have no reason to try and fight Zunin right now. Baron isn't for another two minutes. DMO, they come out in that trade. But Zunin did get the Elder. And while it might not mean that they can win a fight in the next minute or so, because obviously DMO, they're not going to want to fight. They're not going to give you that opportunity. Or you'd hope they won't. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But ultimately, Zunin have bought themselves a lease on life right here. They've managed to last a little bit longer. They can happily clear away super minions. It's gonna be very difficult for DMO to push their advantage any further for the next few minutes. Well, all they have to do is push these waves and it's a lot easier when Natural's just cleared out bottom side. You've got super creeps pushing in that top lane for you. And with Shie and Gala, they'll be able to happily clear out these mid lane waves. So attempts from Suning to get more than the Elder Drake here are going to be pretty easily thwarted by DMO. Baron's going to be up in just over a minute. I think that'll be spawning about the same time that this Elder buff goes down. Which means that there's a very small window in which Suning can push this advantage for themselves. The Supers, though, not really much pressure anywhere. Natural just going to be recalling. And this force is recalls out of Sooning, so this engage can't come through a bit in that position. Now she a clearing out waves mid. Ooh. Will it turn for one fun? <laughs> Question mark. He's trying. He's trying to get she a low, but he, it's not working. He thought, he thought he saw a misplay there. He thought that somebody's right click had broken for a second. I'm just going to see if he could find his opportunity. It's not going to be there. I mean, bullet time is not that big of a cooldown at this point in the game. It's going to be available again. Pretty. Sure. I mean, you can already see it on the left of your screen. It's almost halfway cooled down, so it's not actually that big of a deal to use it. Again, though, you can see Sooning. All they're capable of doing right now is getting control of their waves. But here we oh. go, DMO. One Funk could be in trouble here. Mark comes in as well as Gala. Xiao Punk gets the stun. And SOFM's caught out. Will have his stopwatch to keep himself alive for now. And a redemption keeps him healthy. Now onto the rest of the squad. Xiaobang pulled in. Exhausted as well. But he's got a stopwatch of his own. The Zonyas comes through. And Bin, very tanky, very beefy boy at this point in the game. Stoneplate keeps him alive. But the Supers are in the base. And that opens up the Baron for DMO. And they're going to run directly towards it. DMO will be able to get the Baron. And with none of the team fighting ultimates quite up and available for Sooning. It's particularly Huan Fung's missing in that last fight. Well, now yeah. they can't take fight number one. No call of the Forge got available for Bin for fight number two. And DMO are picking a par Sunni. I was wrong. I said that the missed bullet time didn't matter. I said it was too short of a cooldown to count, but DMO punish it. And that's exactly what we've been saying about DMO. When they find the opportunities, they will punish you. It's exactly what we see as Huan Fung. No bullet time and they lose the fight. And DMO are starting to play that style that we said they struggled with previously, with Natural and the split push role in this Renekton. We've seen Gala and Shie getting caught out when DMO previously gone for this style. Now though, DMO are playing beautifully around it. And please don't make that happen, right? As I was about to say, Gala, you haven't got picked. You're getting these split pushes working and Sunin will not find it onto Gala in the mid lane. They tried, they found an attempt there, but the supers have stopped. These two inhibitors are about to respawn. And the question will be, what can DMO do with this Baron? Last time around, they had a very successful siege. But we're getting beyond normal League of Legends now. We're at the 40 minute mark. This is late game League of Legends. Two minutes until the second Elder of the game will spawn. And Sooning, 
all, all gloves are off at this point when it comes to the gold advantages. Shao Pak just <laughs> desperately try to hurt Bin, but Bin's like barely feeling a scratch on his back. You see that, he's about half health and Shao Pung has successfully pushed in this bottom wave now with the rest of DMO arriving, so then they can help crack this last inhibitor turret in the bottom lane. All these waves are crashing at the same time. I mean, he is about half health, but ultimately, that took him about 20 seconds to get him down to half health. I'd say that's barely feeling this scratch. Either way, the siege continues. Bin's moved up towards the top side of the map now. His mid lane inhibitor is about to respawn. And so Bin starts the fight on towards Gala and Mark here. Bullet time is good this time. Mark forced to flash. Showstopper across the team. Is SOFM with a haymaker finishes one. Good start here for Suning. Inhibitor. I didn't see if it respawned yet. It's about to come back up. The base is intact with Elder Dragon in 50 seconds. Mark will be up, but you can still see DMO. You gotta be careful about how you approach this. Yeah. The team fight is still very strong from Sooning right now. And importantly, Mark will have the Abyssal Voyage, so he can get over to this Elder Dragon. It will be a full five on five. There will be no super minions, but teleports available for both top planers. No further turrets cracked by DMO with that Baron buff as well. So they held on to both their inhibitors, bottom lane turrets still remain standing, and assuming that's a big win for them. Natural now with this teleport up and available is looking to create pressure on this side lane with exposed inhibitors, so then Sooning can't rush this Elder Dragon. They've got to go and respond to him. We're getting tense now here, as it's one apiece in this series. And this could go either way. Sooning the ones to start off on this Elder Natural in the meantime, pushing in the top lane. Neither top laner will be available. Xiao Punk forced to use his Repel early on. And that might just give over this Elder buff. It's going to be going down. SOFM going to try and smite this one. Xiao Punk wants the steal, but he's not going to be there in time. Bin is going to be in trouble because the Abyssal Voyage, it was used. But with a stone plate, he's very tanky and he gets a triple knockup for himself. Just trying to stop the recalls, but they're going to go down. Angel still surviving. Xiao Pong getting chased. SOFM will keep running on that one. Two inhibs taken. This is the trade that Suning have made. A lot was invested by DMO for that fight, though. They aren't able to get much more, and Suning do get that Elder. Two inhibs down means that, again, we're back to this stalemate position where waves are pushing in against Sooning, they'll be forced to clear them out, but Sooning can't really get any of these inner turrets for DMO. And it's frustrating for Sooning, because these Baron Elder timings are so different. They're so out of sync. Once again, they've got the Elder buff, but Baron isn't available. So it's difficult to force a fight and use this combat buff to its full effectiveness. And then in a minute 35, when that Elder buff goes away, we've got the Baron spawning after, as he said. So it's, it's like this, this weird moment where DMO are finding a breath of fresh air to take a moment to was, get back into the that game. That was very brave from one point. There was no one on his team anywhere near. The rest of the squad finally arrives as the tower goes down. But it is confident play. It's exactly what we saw out of him earlier on as well. Natural again, pushing in the side lane. The DMO are trying to desperately clear yeah. these minion waves and they can do so pretty well with the Syndra and with this virus. Oh, trouble bubble, but the minion wave is going to be there to block any follow-up damage. And this is the thing you can just push in the top, push in the mid lane, use this Elder buff. They've got it for 50 seconds more. As SOFM comes up to finish this tower off. Bin's going to head back to base because he knows he needs to defend against Natural. Both teleports available for our top laners. Natural now onto this bottom lane turret, though. He's they got demolished. He will take it, but there we go. So we're trying to get onto him. Oh, they're actually going to get a pullback here onto Natural. He's trying to get away with his life. Flashes, but the follow-up. Oh, what a hook as well. The knock-up. Everything is there. And they get the end of the Elder buff as well, just to finish him off with it. This is going to be a huge death timer. 60 seconds. And Baron is going to be up sooner than that. He does have his teleport to try and get in here when he spawns, though. So soon you can see using Finn's teleport, they want to try and end right now. Yeah, they're not interested in the Baron. They're interested in towers, in inhibitors as well. Gala and Mark, they want to go for a backdoor with this Abyssal Voyage. They've got the minions in the bottom lane. They're going to collect, go kill the inhib, and try and make the play. DMO, need to stop the backs. Quan Fong is recalling right now, and he's going to get away with it as well. Oh, the players denied immediately. Great response from Suning. Can they stop the recalls themselves? 
Xiao Peng in the meantime has started the Baron with Xie. Mark is going to be going down for sure here. He's got four members on him. But are they even aware that this Baron is happening right now? Huang Feng gets a kill, sure. But you're going to lose so much for this one. Health bars low for Xiao Peng and Xie. But they've got enough health to finish the Baron. That's all they need. Beautiful call from DMO. Even if they don't get that inhibitor in the bottom lane, Gala gets the recall, Mark gives the kill over, but they've shut down the pressure from Sunin to go for that Baron play. As well as Bin using his teleport, so Natural can now be a nuisance in these side lanes and look to exploit that teleport advantage. And we'll see if that exploitation can come on through. As you say, it's Natural. He's the one that has the onus on him to use that effectively. We know him for split pushing in the past. We were criticizing him coming into this series, saying that the split push role hadn't been working for DMO. But here in this game, despite the Renekton pick, not typically your split pusher, but it's working out here. Natural wasn't the problem in these scenarios, though. It was the rest of DMO getting caught out. We haven't seen that happen so far, but now, with Sunin starting to get back control of the map, get their vision down, and especially with long range bubbles from Zoe, have that potential to pick off DMO. It is crucial that they don't give that opportunity to Sunin and let Natural play his part. Pretty much everyone in this game is gonna be heading towards that six item mark. You can see both AD carries already at six. Angel and Shie close behind them in the top laners as well. I mean, Natural's been at six items for about 20 minutes at this point because he's on 400 CS. He's been sat the side lane this entire time. But Sooning still kept in their base. And again, this doesn't really change anything getting to our six item point because the execution is what we're all about here. Can Wan Fong and Bin get the setup that they'd like or will we get these picks coming through from DMO? Gala will be a monster in these fights though as he's hit that six item point. 11 to 15 on the scoreboard in a 46 minute game right now. The gold just about even and this Baron buff, there's a minute left on it, but I don't think they're going to be able to get too much off of it. It feels like DMO are starting to get nervous to fight right now. Oh, Gala could be in trouble. The Forge God doesn't follow up though. Showstopper onto everyone. SOFM. He's out by himself, but he's going to be able to find Mark. No, the flash, the cleanse, everything comes on through. Now Xiao Peng and Bin sparring in the bottom lane. Xiao Peng desperately doing what he can just to survive. Inhib has dropped in the top side of the map. And Bin actually goes down. Xiao Peng doing so much work for his team. Tries to finish the inhib. Will go down himself. Natural's in the middle of everyone. As DMO, they just want to end the game. Pushing in the mid side now. Angel's there. Bullet the next time can't close. play the wave. The Nexus is going to go down. Natural's here and DMO take it. Holy what an end to that.